Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to dye a uh, ephemera or mayfly nymph and this is one of the swimmers so it's all about movement in this uh, fly uh, hence the legs uh, perpendicular to the hook shank. Uh, I'd really believe that using CDC here and positioning it like sideways it's going to improve the catch rate of your nymph because everything will move in, in like the slightest of currents. So without any further ado, uh, let's get into tying. So position the bead on the hook first. I mean, otherwise you can't tie it. And for the thread, I'm using nano silk in uh, 30 denier, very thin one. So I'm just gonna go the length halfway or full way, it's not very important, just it, what is important is to set a like solid thread base for your fly. So after I position thread, which can be slippery sometimes, I'm gonna position the, the bead and there are a couple of ways you can do that, you can just go in figure of eights like so, uh, which is one of the ways I really like sometimes, but maybe you, would, you wouldn't like uh, thread to be seen here. So the other way is just like let me go back backwards just Make a little dam over here and because of Jig of tungsten it has this little slot that's Meant to fix it like if you press it this way It's going to fix the position of a jig uh, Jig bead so just make a thread dam in front of this bead and as you finish it, it's going to fix your bead in position. So I'm just going to make tapered dam here. Okay. It's not perfectly fixed, but it's going to be fixed in a couple of more wraps, I guess. So. Let me see. Ah, it's okay, a little bit wobbly, but not a bad not not a bad one now i'm going to use silver wire and you can use uh copper black whatever wire you like i like silver because it will give some shiny uh, effect to our fly so second step after the bead is just a touching wire and as you can see i'm just gonna catch it on the near end of the hook near side of the hook towards me and I'm creating a slight taper as I'm tying the, 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 the wire okay now let me show you it can be considered kind of magic feather and right now I'm going to just uh, no because the hook is inverted hook, uh, the, the wire is towards me but when you put it properly in the vise, it's actually uh, the opposite, but it's not a big deal. Anyway, uh, let's talk about feather. Again, it's owl feather, and I'm choosing the lower part, and the why is very simple. Look at the tips of those feathers. They're like marabou, and this is going to make the tail of my nymph. The tail will actually move in the water, same as the legs. So everything is actually going to breathe in the water. As you advance upwards the feather, those fluffy parts are lost. But still, this is very usable feather because of the surface of the feather, which is very, very soft. So I'm just going to uh, go with my scissors into the feather and just pull out a small piece of it. And as I said, it's going to tell me where I want this tail to be and how long. It can be longer, it's, it doesn't matter. Just tie it in there and that's fine. Like you can see it's like unpro uh, unproportional, but that's not a big deal. Now the next step is taking this, let's call it by its side, and just taking a small bit of it. Again, just getting there in, uh, in there with my scissors, cutting the piece, taking it out. Now remember to because you're going to fold it forward and you want this mottled side to be visible, 
the put that side downwards because you're going to invert it later so just go there with my thread okay oops good now move the owl away just go with your thread advanced touching turns check oops uh, check for the taper taper should be nice there are some excess ends but like everything is going to be so fluffy it won't be visible trust me so what's gonna happen here is I'm going to use my rotation now and just gonna okay wrap it around let's do one more transfer my hands here two turns over the owl one or two in front cut the excess now as you can see the owl is so fluffy and nice so it's gonna suggest movement that's the first thing that's why I use it here now fold this part towards the hook eye and just catch it there move it out of your way with your thread so and now what I like to do I like to create sort of a hot spot here so I just go with a couple of turns behind everything while holding the tail here so it doesn't spin and then just go and cover the upper part of the fly with tight wraps of wire keeping the owl on the top so don't let it slide hence the, the, the finger over here I'm holding it, holding it with my finger so it doesn't slip away now when you reach the thorax area just remove it and then let me see if the length is okay no I, I need like one more turn I think here okay now you can pull back everything here and what I like to do I like to press it back with wire so it stays out of my way and then just go forward with your wire a couple of turns not very important just easier for me to do it this way now break off the wire okay this one's good now while everything is still clean take one CDC feather so you don't have to use anything big so take a CDC feather take a pinch of these barbules and position them uh, forward so a little bit maybe unusual way but that's the proper way in my opinion secure them well now cut the excess here okay no problem this is okay now the second one second set of legs again take the CDC take it out and position it forward and again again just snip the success here not necessary but it's, I like to do it so what I like to do now is again go with my thread backwards and then choose your dubbing in this case it's squirrel dubbing mix again it has CDC inside it has squirrel it has UV so trigger dubbings if you ask me <clears throat> now make a nice little noodle here and cover first thing you will cover is actually a part of the wing case because it's gonna look prettier and more bulky let's say so go a little bit backwards to cover the, the, the owl wing case and then go forward cover everything now if CDC starts spinning just 
hold it with your hands like so keep it divided split now let's see if I need more no I don't maybe one more turn around that's it so because this lower one here looks kind of hollow so I'm just gonna fill it in a little bit now it looks better now the final part is just fold it and what I like to do is I like to split it like this a little bit because it's gonna give me nicer profile okay this is just half a turn and now be careful just split those legs a little bit better if you want if you need actually and then tighten the knot down tighten the owl down a little bit more and then keep the tension on the bobbin you need a couple of more wraps to secure this thing okay these this these legs run away a little bit so I'll just go one more wrap here just keep those legs take your time for this part because it's kind of important and then just hold everything back go with one two turns in front just to keep everything away and clean and then again do it and this is very important now I'm using very thin uh, thread as you as you can see it's like 30 denier it's not building any build up here uh, bulk here if I used any thicker thread it would push everything backwards it's not that that good I will give you um, a video of a similar nymph with owl feather here so you will see uh, well sorry not owl feather but uh, I made the, the, the same legs as here so you will see how it actually uh, wobbles into water and how uh, mobile everything is So I'm going to cut the thread now and I'm going to cut the owl part here paying, paying attention not to cut any CDC I mean if you do it's not the end of the world well I like to do it in one cut so that's why I'm struggling with it a little bit okay Having good scissors really helps, you can cut very close as you can see. Now, this is it, finished fly, and it moves with every breath. Now, look at this, I'll just, even the tail is moving. And I'm just blowing slightly into the fly. Even like when I talk a little bit closer, it can move those. Uh, those legs and now imagine what water can do to this um, now a little tip for fishing those flies you can use it with a larger or a smaller bead or this bead like whatever you like uh, it depends on the current situation in the water how deep water is how strong the water is and how thin tippet you're using so if you are set with your nymph if the nymph is heavy enough for the spot uh, your presentation should be a little bit upstream so you can let your uh, you let your nymph sink down and after you let it sink you just twitch it from time to time upwards and in front of some structure you can just uh, uh, stop the whole system and let the, the current push the tippet and push the the nymph upwards so when the nymph starts rising up all those legs will actually move a little bit like this and they will suggest swimming nymph and that's the, the trigger that uh, fish uh, usually cannot resist um, 
that's more or less it. So if you like this video guys, please give it a like, subscribe and see you next week.